Hello everyone, this is Erlin from the Experience Research Lab. Today I'll show you how to scrap website data using RStudio. Some people call it web scrapping. Web scrapping, also known as web harvesting or web data extraction, is data scrapping used for extracting data from websites. Uh, it is a technique using web scrapping software to extract data from human-readable output coming from another program such as the World Web using the Hypertext Transfer Protocol or a web browser. There are several web scrapping software available in the market, among others are Bright Data, DivBot, GrabSR, Import.io, Octopairs, Pairs Hub, Scrapper API, Scrapping Bee, Scrapping Dog, and Scrappy. Unfortunately, most of this software is not available for free. You have to pay at least $49 per month. Octopairs and Pairs Hub uh, do offer pl uh, free plans, but the capability is strictly limited. So here's why you need to have web scrapping skills handy. If you are a programmer like coding or at least do not mind working with a few lines of code, you can freely scrap website data uh, using Golang, Python, or R. In case you are wondering whether web scrapping is legal or not, I can confidently say that it is legal. At least until today, there is no law against this practice. However, it is only acceptable for publicly available data such as information displayed on this website. This website, Killed by Google.com, is one of my favorites. If you work on product, whether it's a product research, product design, or new product development, I recommend that you visit at least once in a while. Why? I'll let you know by the end of this video. For now, as suggested by the title of today's video, let us first scrape the data with R, particularly R Studio. There are three data points that I want to scrape here. They are time, uh, product name, and product description. Uh, as shown here, there are 267 um, products killed by Google, and I don't want to copy them one by one. So I've got my RStudio open here, and to start with, I will need at least two packages, RFest and Dplayer. So let's first install these two packages. Install packages RFest and install packages Dplayer. Uh, click Run and wait for a while. Once I have them installed, I'll need to load the libraries. So let's load the libraries, library harvest that we have just installed and library dplayer. Now I need to define the link that will be the source of my data, which is killed by google.com. Usually for a single data point, I only type link equals quote the URL. But since there are three data points, I need to make it more specific. For the first one, I'll define the link as type link. Uh, which is the killed by google.com. Now to get the information from the page, I need to tell R to read the HTML. So time page, read HTML time link. Afterwards, I need to tell R to pipe the HTML elements, also known as notes, and get the text only. To do the task, R needs specific information on the element. Therefore, I right click on the uh, text or the first data point that I want to get and select inspect. Uh, this action will open the HTML page as shown here. And here I need to click on the icon in the top left corner, this one. Afterwards, I have to hover my mouse over the text and click on it. Back on the HTML page, I can see highlighted text. It contains HTML code for the text and CSS style, which I don't need. Uh, since I only need the HTML code, I'll only copy this one. Uh, it is this E1HF78CM1. To have them in one table, I need to tell R to get them all in the table defined as timetable. So, uh, time page pipe HTML nodes. Uh, the E nodes is E1HF78CM1. Pipe again and get the HTML text. And to see the details, I can type timetable and click run. There you go. These steps are applicable for the second and third data points. However, for the second data point, I need to rename it as product link. The link actually is still the same, killed by google.com. Uh, product page, read the HTML from the product link that I have just specified. And for the product table, I need to again inspect the HTML elements and get the HTML nodes. So if I right click on this and click inspect, hover my mouse to this particular text, I'll get the highlighted uh, code here. 
and the HTML uh, nodes will be E1 HF7 HCM5. So paste it here, pipe to get the HTML text. Now to see the details, type product table and click run. Similarly, I'll rename uh, the third data point, uh, which is the description, uh, and uh, specify it as the ESC link, still the same link killed by google.com. So the page will be uh, one red on the link. And for the description table, I need to again uh, in click here, right click actually, uh, click inspect, click on this icon, hover my mouse over the text, and refer to this highlighted text where the HTML nodes is E1HF78CM2 pipe and get the HTML text. To see the details, type DSC table and click run. To see. Now I'll combine these three data points into a single data frame and specify it as killed by google.com, uh, which is data frame comprising timetable, product table, and description table. The last step is exporting it as CSV file so that I can share it with people who do not use RStudio or even with myself for further analysis. So now write CSV, uh, which is the data frame uh, killed by google.com, store it in C folder, particularly the RStudio, and name it as killed by google.csv. In the environment, I can see the CSV table with three columns. And if I open the folder in my computer, I can see the file stored here. Now I'll uh, answer the question with simple descriptive analysis. But before that, let me insert three columns here. The first column is for the launch year. It refers to the first four characters from the left. The second column is the killing year, which refers to the first characters from the right. And the last column is for the product lifetime. It is the killing year minus launch year plus one. Double click on each and let us delete this because we have not yet had any idea when these products will be gone. But from 1997 to 2022, uh, at least for 25 years, there were 267 products killed by Google. On average, they only survived for less than 6 years. Is it a bad or a good thing? I cannot say much yet. But if I create a time series from this column alone, I can see that product lifetime is getting shorter over time. Google Toolbar, launched in 2000, made the longest journey for almost 22 years. Picasa, Google Search Appliance, and G Suite, launched between 2002 and 2006, stayed in the market for 11 years. Google Sites, the classic version, launched in 2008, survived for 14 years. Angular GS and Google Go Links, launched in 2010, made it for 12 years. Google Play Movies and TV and Google Map Crisis, launched in 2011, had to stop after 11 years. Post on Google and Google Public Affairs, launched in 2012, lived for 10 years. Moving fast forward to many years later, Google Photos Print, launched in 2020, died in the first year. Lesson learned for the product manager, product owner, product researcher, or product designer. Even Google failed multiple times. So if you do, don't feel too bad. There are several reasons for such a giant to kill its product. Among others are product relevance to the market needs, product differentiation from substitutes offered by competitors, and product cannibalization. In the upcoming video, I'll talk more about product cannibalization, but today I'll leave you here. Thank you for being with me. For more insights into data, from data collection to data visualization, please subscribe, visit our website, listen to our podcast, and follow our social media on LinkedIn and Twitter. See you there, and cheers.